You've probably heard somebody say, this camera is not Netflix approved, but what exactly does that mean? Netflix has a set of standards, specific camera requirements. For example, cameras must have a true 4K UHD sensor equal to or greater than 3840 photo sites wide. Codecs must be of a minimum of 10 bit with bit rates of 240 megabits per second, although raw is recommended. And picture profiles should not be baked into the original file. In other words, they must be in a log format. But aside from these camera requirements, there's also specific workflow that needs to be implemented. For example, Netflix requires a two to one aspect ratio. Anything greater than must be evaluated and approved by Netflix before moving forward. Also, if you plan to use anamorphic lenses, you'll need to use a different set of approved cameras. This is due to the higher resolution that is required to capture anamorphic content and keep it at a true 4K UHD that Netflix requires. But even with all these requirements, there's still a set of rules that need to be followed depending on the camera that you're using. For example, the C500 Mark II that actually just got Netflix approved needs to be black balanced at the start of the day and whenever there's a drastic change in temperature. By the way, if you're interested in learning more about Netflix approved cameras, I will leave a link down below in the description. So does this mean if you wanna create a show on Netflix, do you have to use a Netflix approved camera? Well, not necessarily. The Netflix approved camera list is only for originals. Shows like House of Cards, Narcos, and Stranger Things. And I feel that there's this big misconception that if you wanna produce and distribute a show on Netflix, it has to be shot on an approved camera. And that is not the case. Netflix buys content all the time. So you can go out and shoot your film, a documentary, and use whatever camera you'd like, and you have the potential to sell to Netflix. Now, interestingly, there are exceptions where you can actually use any camera even when filming an original. 90% of the total runtime needs to be captured on any approved camera. That means Netflix gives you 10% leeway to use any camera you want. So for every hour, you get six minutes of freedom. And they did this for practical reasons. Sometimes you need to get a drone shot or possibly rig up a crash cam. And it just makes more sense to use something less expensive than using a camera like a RED that costs a lot more money. Now, I always see people arguing online saying X, Y, Z camera sucks. It isn't Netflix approved. And it's almost like this list has become a benchmark to whether a camera is good or not, which I think is silly. I mean, let's face it. If Netflix called you right now and said, hey, John, we want you to film a Netflix original right now. Hey, Peter, we just got approved for a Netflix original. I... I can't remember who I called. Chances are you're gonna have a pretty nice budget and most likely you're not gonna wanna film this using a Sony a7S. And no disrespect to people using a Sony a7S. I mean, I think it's a great camera. And 99% of the people arguing online are most likely not going to film a Netflix original, so you really have nothing to worry about. And again, this Netflix approved camera list has become this prestigious lineup where people are actually using this as a deciding factor to what camera they should purchase next, which I think is stupid because there are so many amazing cameras out there. Take for example, the Ari Alexa Mini, which is an incredible cinema camera that has been used in many films that have won best picture. Well, guess what? It is not Netflix approved, why? because it doesn't have a true 4K UHD sensor. So take this list with a grain of salt because it really doesn't mean anything unless you're filming a Netflix original. My name is Armando, thanks again for watching and you will catch me in the next one, adios.